the fifth root of x plus the fifth root of x plus 2 squared equals 0. And we need to solve this for x. So we need to find a number that we could plug in here for x and have it work. And to do this, I'm going to take one of these terms and move it over to the other side. And it will become negative. And then I'll use a power of 5 to get rid of the radical. So this will be the fifth root of x equals the negative, and then over here, the fifth root of x plus 2 squared. Now, I'll take the fifth root of the left side, and the fifth, I'm sorry, not the fifth root, a power of 5 on the left side and a power of 5 on the right. And the power of 5 gets rid of the fifth root. So on the left, we just have x. On the right, we have a negative number raised to an odd power, so that will give me a negative answer, but this this fifth root and this power of 5 will undo each other. So I'm going to end up with simply this x plus 2 squared and that negative sign right there. So it's negative x plus 2 squared. Now this we can solve. x equals negative. I'm going to do this, uh, work this out, x plus 2 squared. That's x squared plus 4x plus 4, and then distribute the negative sign. So I get x is negative x squared minus 4x minus 4. Now I'm just going to rearrange these terms. What I'm going to do next, I'm basically going to add x squared to each side, and add 4x to each side, and add 4 to each side. And you can see everything on the right will cancel out. I'll just have 0 on the right. And I'll add all of that to the left side as well, and that will give me, on the left, x squared plus 5x plus 4, and then I have equals 0. And we can solve this. This is a, a simple quadratic. This one will actually factor. This factors as x plus 1, x plus 4, equals 0. So you can see the two solutions. x equals negative 1, and x equals negative 4. Those are the two solutions. Now we can check those. If those are in fact solutions, we should be able to plug them in for x and have them work. Okay, let's check x equals negative 1 first, because that's pretty easy. We would get the fifth root of negative 1 right there, plus the fifth root of negative 1 plus 2 squared, and hopefully that will equal 0. Now the fifth root of negative 1, well that's just negative 1, and over here, look, this is easy. Negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1, squared is 1. So we just have the fifth root of 1, which is 1, and 1 plus 1 equals 0, so that works. Now let's check x equals negative 4. If that's a solution, we should be able to put negative 4 in for x up there. So this would be the fifth root of negative 4. And I don't know what that is, but that is a real number. We can have a negative number under the radical if it is an odd index. That's OK. So this is not an imaginary number of some kind. This is a real number. And then I have plus, and over here, the fifth root of this will be negative 4 plus 2 squared. Now again, I don't know what number this is, but I'm going to leave it in this form for now. I have the fifth root of negative 4 plus, and over here, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2 squared is positive 2. So this is the fifth root, I'm sorry, negative negative 2 squared is positive 4. So it's the fifth root of positive 4. And again, I don't know what numbers these are, but you should be able to see that those are equal and opposite. So those add up to 0 also. So that one works. Both solutions work. x is negative 1 and x is negative 4. Okay. Now I want to show you another way to look at this. We can actually approach this graphically as well. I'm going to erase a little bit over here just to free up some room and erase these powers here. So I'm going to look at this um, equation in this form for a second. Okay. I'm going to graph this. I'm going to show you a graphical solution here. 
I've got in, in this form, I've got this equals that. And I'm going to think of these as two functions. You can think of this as a function, y equals the fifth root of x, and that's a function that could be graphed. And so is this. You could say y equals the negative fifth root of x plus 2 squared. And let's distinguish these. We'll call this function y1 and function y2. Okay, and notice if these are equal to each other, then those x values should be the same excuse me, these y values should be the same at the x values where these functions cross. And I'll show you this. Watch this. Let's actually graph this. I'm going to put these in on the calculator for y1 and y2. So y1 is the fifth root of x. That's x to the power of parentheses one-fifth. That's my fifth root function. And it looks looks like this. And I've got the I've got the graph uh, the zoom setting here so you'll see some things. You could you could zoom, I'll put it on a standard zoom setting. You can see the fifth root function looks something like this and you can see it a little bit better if we zoom in. Oops, zoom, option two, is zoom in. Okay, that's my fifth root function. Okay, now let's graph the other one also for y2. This will be the negative, and I need parentheses. I'm actually going to need two parentheses. I need x plus 2, close parentheses, squared, and then close parentheses, to the power of, parentheses, 1 fifth. Okay, now let's graph that. And now that's a strange looking function. You see the little cusp right there? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my window here. Notice these cross right there. Those two functions cross right there at x equals negative 1. I'm going to change my window. I'm going to come over here, x minimum, make it negative 6. And this is my fifth root function. And then here's my other one. And look, it crosses right there also. And there. And you can hit trace, and you can see where these curves cross. It crosses right over there at negative 1 right there and then it crosses over here also at um at negative four well I can just type in negative four crosses there so y1 is equal to y2 at those two places negative one and negative four and those are our solutions right there you can see those graphically as well as algebraically pretty cool